In the age of the computer, almost everything you see is nice and crisp and clean. We're moving so far away from that hand-touched space that it's nice to sometimes add a little bit of texture and distressing to your images to make them look more hand-touched or weathered or worn. So we're going to work with some distressing techniques. And the first thing that you would do is create some texture that you can work with. Now what I would recommend to start off, and then of course you can veer away from this and get as creative as you'd like, is to print out a piece of paper that has just black on it. So white piece of paper, fill the screen with black, print it off, and then fold that guy up, crinkle it, unfold it, refold it, crinkle it, step on it, scrape it against the side of the table. Just destroy that thing so that you start creating these white creases in the black ink. And then you'll scan it in and bring it into Photoshop and it could look something similar to this. And we're gonna use this texture as a way to make it look like the photograph has actually been damaged and distressed. So the first thing you'll do is you'll select all and copy everything and then go back into your photograph, whatever it happens to be, and then rather than paste it right here in the layers panel, go to the channels panel, click on the new button so you'll create a new alpha channel and then paste that texture in here. And then rather than selecting the alpha channel completely, what you'll do is put your cursor right on the thumbnail, command or control, click on the thumbnail, and this will pick up just the white parts of that image. Click the RGB so that you can see your photograph again and then switch back over to the layers panel. Now in this case, we need to do a little bit of fancy footwork. Create a new layer, and you wanna make sure that your colors are set to the default. So you can press D on your keyboard or click this little icon here at the bottom of the tools panel to make sure that you have black on top and white below. And then you're going to Command or Control, click Delete, and that will fill that selection area with white. You can deselect with the Command or Control D, and then you can adjust the blending mode of these scratches to something like Overlay. If needed, you could also adjust the opacity down, or you might like it really bright so it looks like it was a photograph that was actually folded up and stuck in someone's pocket or left on the garage floor for days and days or possibly even years. And then go ahead and label that layer. And you could call it whatever you like. Now the next thing that you might want to do is create a channel mixer adjustment layer to give your image like this dreamy cross-processing effect. And that's here with the cookie button. Choose channel mixer. And then what you actually choose here is totally up to you. You'll just adjust the sliders until it looks the way you want it to. Now I'll just arbitrarily plug in some numbers that I've been playing with. So now, right now we're dealing with the red channel. You can add positive or negative numbers in here. If you're going to add a negative number, just make sure you put the minus sign before. I'm going to switch the output channel to green and plug in some more numbers. And as you'll notice that the whole look of the image is completely changing as I play around with this. Depending on your particular image, you may want to choose different options. I'm going to do a little bit less of the red on the blue channel. Just ever so slightly bump up the green. And we'll leave that at blue and we'll leave the constant at zero. Next we can add some grain, dust, and scratches. So what I would do is I would select all three of these layers. Hold down the Alter Option key while you're clicking the Options menu and merge them onto a single layer above everything. And then we'll start to modify this layer. Go to your Filter menu, choose Noise, Add Noise. This will add some grain to your image and you can choose the amount of grain to add. You can also choose whether or not it's Gaussian or uniform and whether or not it's monochromatic. I tend to think for an image like this, monochromatic grain works better, but you certainly don't need that much. Probably somewhere in the 20 to 30 percent range would be just enough to give it a little bit of texture. Click OK. And then on this layer, or even on another layer, so let's add another layer, we can add what looks like dust and scratches. And with your pencil tool, which is underneath your paintbrush, you can paint in black or white, or draw rather, and just make little marks. Your pencil is so small, and the image large, these little marks on here will look organic if you just kind of scribble around. And I'm just 
rambling around the image and just adding these little marks here and there. I'm going to toggle this to white and do the same thing. Oops, didn't toggle. There we go. So now I'm getting some white marks on there. And you could do as much or as little as you want. Now if we wanted to give this more of an old-fashioned feel, we can create a vignette. So we'll select this layer here and we'll make an oval selection with our elliptical marquee tool, something like this. And then we'll inverse the selection so we have everything but the oval. And then we'll go to the Refine Edge button and we'll add a little bit of a feather so that the edge around the outside is much smoother than it was before. Something like in here would work. And click OK. And now what we're going to do is we're going to copy merge so we can copy everything and then we'll paste everything onto a new layer. It's still underneath the scratches layer and for here what we can do is add a blur. Something like a Gaussian blur would work well. We're just trying to make the outer edges look a little bit softer. You could also change the blending mode here to something like darken or multiply. Then to make the outer edges more of like a vignette, you'll reselect this selection and on a new layer, you can fill that layer with a solid color such as black. And you can bring the opacity down and or even change the blending mode to darken or multiply until it looks a little bit natural. You don't want to go too far with the opacity on the top end just a slight darkening around the outer edges. If you needed to make it look even more organic, you can select the mask and then paint with black or white to give it a little bit more of an organic edge so it's not such a perfect oval. And when you're done, you can put all of the layers into a folder And then you can see your before and your after to see how much you can make your image look distressed and texturized with all of these different techniques combined.